Hello YouTube, this is the engineer from the tag team, architect and engineer from the 8-bit engineers. This is the first of two video tutorials for building a compact version of my perpetual motion device, which I'm now calling the Smart Booster, along with a whole ton of minecart quirks and new way to use tracks and pressure plates. The first video will explain the quirks and how to use them, and the second will detail how to actually build the booster. The difference between the smart booster and a normal booster system is that my system will send you so far you won't ever have to build another booster again. No more messy boosters on the way, wasting all the iron along the way, and it sends an empty cart nearly 20 times farther, making boosters unnecessary for automated systems as well. We're here on Mr. Mango Fixation's Intercontinental Railway, which he generously allowed us to use, and you can find a link to his latest video in the description box. Also, the basis for my counter comes from Ethos Lab, a great channel which you should check out, and that's in the description box as well. I take the information given in two of his videos for the way boats interact with doors. A lot of thanks to everyone who helped out in the forum thread, that link is in the description too. There's a lot to cover in this video, so I recommend knowing the minecart basics if you don't already. Simply go to Bob's Minecart Tutorials and they'll tell you everything you need to know. I'm also assuming you've seen the first videos on my perpetual motion device. Refer to them if you're confused about anything I say. And now that that's out of the way, let's get started. What you see here is a station I made a perfectly working smart booster. I used EnvEdit, obviously, because this isn't my world and I have no intention of mining the iron from the get-go and dealing with tools breaking as I tested this. Walking in here, you press the button to call the cart and the cart drops and you would normally get in. I'm not because I want to show you that this has a rider detection system, but one that doesn't use another booster. See? Nothing obvious. Now, we wait. It takes a bit to warm up, as per usual. But in a second here, it'll boost. Right there. Doesn't activate the cart detection system. It goes in. Let's call another one. When it drops, we'll just get in. And because we're in it, a second because we're in it we go off I'll be showing you how that works later too some information before I show you exactly how to build it the whole thing not including walls fits within a 5 by 14 by 10 space counter and all uses only 44 tracks and three minecarts not including the one you ride it's a little weaker than the one shown in our other videos but it's possible to make it as strong with almost no extra space, just more minecarts and tracks. This smaller one will send you approximately 6,000 tracks with the rider and 500 without one. All right, let's build. Now, this compact booster uses almost every single quirk and of tracks of minecarts that I can find, some that I don't think most people know about, or anybody, anything. So the first thing is we need to find our west and our south. Here we go. This is the direction that minecarts and tracks are most likely to turn to. All right, this is very important. We'll be using this all over the place. You guys should know about this. Oh, and I forgot to add, we'll be putting the booster facing this way with the uh, boost part coming out this way. You'll see what I mean when I build it. All right, now that we know our west and our south, we can look at a couple more quirks. Having a booster facing north or east makes it possible to make a small self-resetting booster. Now, it's thought not to be able to believe to make it any other direction. Because if you replace this one, it just goes and follows the southwest rule. However, using redstone, you can make a self-resetting booster. Just place the torch next to it, and it'll stay. That's very important. We'll be using that. 
Finally, the last type of quirk we need to know is how pressure pads can get activated without another booster. You see that? Because the way it turns, the way it moves on these tracks, the cart will activate it. Like that. Now, it, it, it is important how fast the booster, how fast the cart is going. Sometimes if it's going too fast, it won't activate. So in order to prevent that, all we need is this. The cart flips out, flips like crazy, so we can just place it to the side. Actually, other side. And it activates it. No loss to speed or anything. This is very important too. Um, and as far as I've searched all over the place, I haven't found anyone else who's found this, but it's so simple, so easy that someone else has got to have found this out. All right, and that's the end of our uh, first video for the Smart Booster. Like it if you do, subscribe. Next video is right in the description box or in the playlist. We'll be getting into, now that we've finished with the quirks, exactly how to build the booster. See you there.